Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, start this lecture with a thought process from Rudyard Kipling, who is well known Nobel laureate. He states, I keep six honest serving men, they taught me all I knew. Their names are what, why, when, how, where and who. These are the very important tools for gaining the knowledge rather in other words converting the uh, information into knowledge can be done by these questions. So, let us now recall what we learnt in the last lecture. We basically started looking at the meaning of the civilization because we had started discussing about Indus Valley civilization. So, we need to know what is civilization? If you look at the civilization is basically a human society which has developed in such a way that it will be having a uh, sufficient amount of food and higher level of spirituality, science, technology and also the rural and uh, urban areas in a some group they will be developed and it will be having also a philosophy and unique cultural values what they live. And we also identified the uh, characteristics of a civilization and we also looked at what are the contribution of Indus Valley civilization to the world and what we call today the Indus Valley civilization as Indus Saraswati civilization and it is having enormous and then we have also looked at the comments made by the giants like uh, Aravinda and Swami Vivekananda and also similar uh, comments uh, on the this Indian civilization were made by several other uh, western scholars and they felt that India's civilization was quite rich and uh, even today it is also living. Uh, I must tell you that that uh, Indian civilization is still alive, but whereas the most of the ancient civilization are almost dead. So, we need to relook at it and today we will be looking at basically that why we uh, need to uh, look at the ancient Indian science and technology. And uh, before that, let me just tell you that we have also covered the course content, I need not to go through it. But I uh, would like to draw your attention that you can uh, for uh, you know refer these books like uh, uh, History of Technology in India and from which I will be taking most of the material for this course and which is edited by A. G. Bagh and it is basically published by uh, INSA that is Indian National Science Academy which is a well known uh, organization in New Delhi. Beside this uh, recently we have published two books, one is Glimpses of Ancient Indian Science Technology in 2015 you can refer that. So, also the another book this forays into ancient Indian science and technology again edited by myself. Uh, so, uh, you can get this book, these are very small book, you can call it as a booklet, not a book. You can get in Amazon.com as a kind of things, you can go through this and some of the material I will be taking from all these three references. Beside this, lot more uh, places I will be using. So, now we need to ask this question, why are ancient Indian science and technology relevant today? because uh, you know you might be thinking that we are at the pinnacle of the scientific and technological development 
And when we are at the, this thing, why we need to look at ancient, that to Indians, Indian science and technology. A lot of people uh, like you who are not exposed to the uh, Indian science and technology, they might be thinking we are not having anything. So, if that is the assumption you are having in your mind, the natural questions so why you need to look at it. So, before uh, really answering these questions, we need to ask also few questions. Let us ask this question, what are the current problems faced by humankind? Can anybody tell like? Uh, not the same thing, maybe different if it is coming to your mind. Okay, <coughs> fine. So, what we are discussing is basically depletion of natural resources. As I was telling earlier that petroleum, you know, is the engine of the modern life and it is depleting at a faster rate, not only petroleum, but other things as well like your iron ore or your any other uh, resources, natural resources we are having. For example, jungles, mountains, we have already destroyed the eastern ghat and western ghat which is a protector for us as I told in the last lecture. And extinction of species, there are several species particularly in this, this country, India, where there was a biodiversity. <laughs> And the number of species were quite high, but it is receding at an alarm rate. So, uh, if you look at as to the review published in May 29, 2014 in a very prestigious journal of science, current extinction rate happening is around something thousand time faster due to the human beings. You see, we are supposed to be the protector of the environment and so also the living beings, we are destroying it. And almost around 20,000 species are near extinction, they may you know won't be there and in the name of development we are doing. And why we are doing this, how we could do this because of the power we have got due to the modern technology. So, also the global warming and we all of know that we are being affected by the global warming of temperature is going up. You might be knowing like yesterday it was quite hot in Kanpur in November 23rd and today it has, it is changed, it is little relatively cool, right. So, there is a change in the kind of climate change across the globe. And the climate today you cannot predict, there might be cold, there might be quite hot and then rain may come in, you know it is unpredictable, climate is changing and so also environmental pollution. The environmental pollution is a epidemic stage, now the we need to look at it, it is not only the air pollution which is being created by what we call use of fossil fuels for our transport and power plants and other things and there is a water is being polluted which is uh, very important for the sustenance of any form of life, not only human being but any form of life and not only that but also the pollution of human mind. Today mind is not at peace, all the time it is in jittery and also it is causing a lot of turmoil in the mind of the people. As a result, there is a degradation of human values. Like I always feel that India is having 130 crore people, but where are the human beings? They do not have the qualities of the human beings, there are certain qualities are required which will distinguish them basically uh, from the animal. So, and there is a problem and the economy bankruptcy, this is the total, if you look at the economy of the entire globe, not only India is on basically gambling, that is share, you know business, the, and there is no uh, what you call constancy in that. So, therefore, we are in deep trouble 
and deterioration of law and order not only in India across the globe and there is a unrest of social, political and economical. Always the you know like unemployment there is a lot of problems around that. So, if you look at these are the problems we are facing, we are facing uh, as of now. Now, what are the solution? What are the solution for this? And what are the causes? Because if we want to find out solution, we need to find out what are the causes, right, of that. Let us uh, look at that what are the effects of global warming? There is a rise of sea levels. You know, in recently uh, in uh, Odisha, lot of land being lost uh, near the what you call sea beach in Puri, where the Lord Jagannath temple is there. And so also in West Bengal and the coastal area, lot of problems, land is being consumed by the sea, right. You might be aware the Sundarban areas, we have lost a lot of land and which is submerged in the sea. So, uh, that is a big uh, problems we are, we will be facing in future because the what you call the ice being getting uh, melting out. So, those will be as a result that there will be sea rise and we I have already talked about the habitat damage and species being you know extinct and uh, their life is also very important for to have a balance with the human being you know in this uh, beautiful earth. So, there is an increase in temperature there is no doubt about it because I remember that when I was a kid. I used to live without a fan. Today, in the same place, I cannot live without air condition. So, therefore, the temperature is rising at a very faster rate and it is causing a lot of other problems also. And water quality and also the quantity are in deep trouble. You might be knowing in Kanpur, the water level is going down per year around 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 meter, right going down water level, ground water level. And it is not only that, like in, it is also worst in some other places. Being in a Gangetic plain nearby Ganga, we are better off, but in other places it is in deep trouble. And so also the quality of the water. And these because of we are doing. Let me talk about warm winter in Himalayan region. Himalaya is a great thing for us, because it is having a very big ice cap. And that lowers the temperature and maintains balance the temperature in this region. And the threats to the biodiversity arising from the climate change are very acute in eastern Himalayan regions. And that region is threatened and there is a endemic species with the restricted distribution because the species are getting extinct. Not only that, if you might have watched in a TV, like you know, people are going and for trekking, and it's become business. Lot of people are going and they are putting dumping all the plastics and other things and spoiling the environment. I always tell to my student who are trek going for trekking from IIT Kanpur, you please don't go. And if you are going, make sure that you take all those outs and clean that Himalaya because that is the big thing for us. Not only Himalaya, for any other mountains are very important for our life, because they control lot of things without our knowledge. So, we should not spoil them and uh, kind of things. The, for example, we are having technology, therefore, you could manage to go to that place, otherwise no, right? Very few people could go. So, therefore, technology may helpful, but it is also spoiling the nature. And so, the regions, this region, specifically Himalayan regions, wetlands are being affected by erratic weather observed in many parts of the region and this we are having not only the wetlands in the Himalayan region, other places that controls the environment. So, those are being spoiled and this affects uh, will basically these things will affect the water quantity and quality in rivers like, like Ganga or Brahmaputra kind of things. So, uh, because this is being fed from the Himalaya. And not only that wetlands when I was talking about, basically it is not only in the Himalayan, other places also. It is almost 
people have swallowed the wetlands and they have taken for their habitats and other thing. And those are the points we need to protect. There should be actually according to me, Himalayas should be no man's land, no, nobody should go there, should be protected then only because uh, then only it can really uh, preserve the originality and we can have that. So, uh, what is important is that in this country we are endowed with natural resources and they are the players who maintain the balance in the ecology and we need to protect them. And <laughs> like in uh, ancient time we are, uh, uh, we are having rules and regulation, if you go to the Arthasastra and other thing that you will find there is a reserve re uh, regions which where people would not enter. So, we know that burning of fossil fuels is causing a lot of pollutions, you know, in our city and also the other areas where the power plant being installed. We know we are having Panki power station in Kanpur, how much dust label, how much, you know, uh, carbon dioxide and other thing we emit and then we that creates a lot of problems in, you know, and uh, in around these places. So, if you look at as a result, this is there is an increase in the uh, concentration of carbon dioxide, you know that carbon dioxide is basically a greenhouse gas which is increasing if you look at these are the points that these are the experimental points and this pink color is the prediction, it is going you know uh, it was basically it, it was increasing at a very smaller rate from 1750 to 1950 because you know 1750 is taken uh, as a datum because that was the industrial revolution what started in western countries. And then it is increasing 1950 or maybe around that increase at a very faster rate. And today if you look at it has crossed the 400 marks, if you look at the data November 21st, 2016, this is 403.54 ppm and it is quite high. And if it will go above let us say 450, maybe another uh, 30, 40 years or 50 years, we will be in deep trouble because you know like uh, it will be causing a lot of problem this all there might be lot of you know death and then uh, there is the imbalance and it will go somewhere we do not know. So, therefore, one has to be very careful about that and, uh, and all these things we are doing because of the problem because of the power we have got from the modern technology and the science and we are misusing it, abusing it. So, if you look at what are the causes of this problem, this problem is basically as I told excess exploitation of natural resources by man armed with the power of modern science and technology. Is it this is, this is the only cause or is there any other cause, can anybody tell me? What are the other causes? This is one cause we know like because if the technology could have not there or if the man could have not you know having the power to understand the physical laws and the nature they could have not done that. But is it the only cause for these problems what we are facing or is there any other causes? Any idea? So, if you look at it is not that the science or technology are responsible, it is the philosophy of the science and technology that is very important is the cause. Why? Because if you look at we believe that we are a part of mother nature, but the modern scientists like Baker or Darius who are the profounder, they started talking about that they want to win over the nature armed with the science and technology. How can it possible? Because we are a part of the nature. So, if, if suppose for example, I am a part of it, my hand is a part of it, can my hand win over my bo entire body? Certainly no, it is foolishness. So, therefore, the philosophy of that they want to win over the nature is wrong. Similarly, how can I, when I am a subset of the whole set, we will be winning over swallowing it? No, not possible and if you do that, you will be facing the similar problems. So, wrong philosophy of life, 
what far we are and whether we uh, you know like we are uh, being consuming the product and process you know kind of things and living a life like animal running from pillar to post from the morning to night even we will will not sleep in the night you know for doing work. So, then we do not know what is the objective of life, what is the philosophy of human life. Human life is very important because human is unique animal in the entire uh, what you call animal systems and the or living beings. Society today controlled by the greedy market forces. Today our life is being controlled by them. What kind of shirt I will wear? what kind of shoes I will wear, what food I will take, what are the things, we get swayed by them. As a result, we also they, they control our health, right. So, health and they want to grab our wealth. So, therefore, we are in drip trouble and we do not have our own thinking. They are making us busy from morning till the late night, so that you do not have time to think and you become ceased to be a human being. Unless you think yourself, what you are doing? You are not a human being because man is a thinking animal by nature. So, therefore, we cease to be and we are being made ourselves busy for getting them to be satisfied their greedy nature. So, lack of leadership with proper vision, who will tell? The leaders today are not leader, they are managers. There is a difference between manager and leaders. So, leaders should have a vision, not that micromanage and what is to be done, what not to be done. So, therefore, we are lacking in leadership, not only in country like India, but across the globe. And there is an intellectual bankruptcy, people are not thinking. If they are not thinking, they do not have ideas, they will just follow us, they are not idea generators. Rather, in other words, they are not creative in nature. As I told earlier, man is a creative creature by nature, unless he will be creative, he cannot enjoy the life. So, therefore, he cannot come up. So, degradation of human value system and when you are become human, human being, then value comes into picture. Animal will not be having value, right. So, therefore, that we are not living a proper human life or humanity is at stake, therefore, we cannot have a good value system. So, wrong educational methodology, the way we are being educated. The way, we, the way we are being taught is not the right way of doing. So, therefore, whole problems are tantamounts to that. So, and on the top of it, lack of spirituality. Spirituality is a natural state and which we have forgotten in the name of development, in the name of modernity. So, therefore, these are the very important causes of the problems. So, therefore, if you look at these are the causes of problem, then what are the solution? And uh, we are now trying to answer the question why we need to look at ancient science and technology and how to go about it. And uh, I have already identified the problems, we need to find out solution. So, we will stop over here and we will look at in the next lecture. Thank you very much.